Welcome to the sixth in our Seriously Pro video series. We've set up quite a bit of the board now, and the next thing we're going to attempt to do in this video is actually install a GPS receiver so that the board can get GPS coordinates. Now there's a couple of things that we need to say right at the very top of the video. As I'm recording this in early September, there are still problems with the GPS code that's running in CleanFlight right now. So if you're looking to install the GPS to get a fantastic GPS hold and a great GPS return to launch, you're not going to get it right now. As of the recording, the GPS hold feature kind of works. The GPS return to launch is still uh, not perfect. So I wouldn't be installing a GPS if you're looking to actually have those extra two flight modes. However, if you want to install a GPS to have things like the GPS coordinates and per route to home and all those things appear on your on-screen display and also have those GPS coordinates sent down via the telemetry link onto your Tronus radio, then it's still a fantastic thing to do. For those of you that have seen the NAS A32 videos running CleanFlight, some of the information that we're going to go through you'll have seen before. We will be manually configuring this GPS unit. Um, we're going to also play with a couple of other GPS units as well. Here's one of the NEO 06s that we've used in the channel on loads of different flight controllers. We're actually going to install this one on here, but we'll play with this one too in the coming video. And we'll show you how to manually configure the controller. Now, in other videos that I've used with the NAS 32 I actually shared the configuration file so that if you had one of these older style U-Blox GPS units, it was a piece of cake to set up. I'm actually going to go through and show you step by step how you actually manually configure any GPS unit that uh, is supported by CleanFlight and that hopefully should mean that nobody gets into trouble. So once we've done that, we'll also install it onto the board and then I'll show you it all working in CleanFlight, giving us GPS coordinates. To set this up, we are going to need a PC. We are going to need some other bits and pieces. We are also going to need one of these things. Um, yes, it's the trusty FTDI adapter. If you haven't seen this on the channel already, um, if you search for FTDI in Painless 360, we use it all over the place. If you haven't got an FTDI basic adapter, I'd recommend you get one. It's going to be really handy to help us set up not only this GPS unit, but in the next video where we're actually going to set up the on-screen display as well. So now we've gone through all that, let's talk about the manual. So the documentation, as with all of the clean flight bits and pieces, is changing all the time, but you can find it at github.com slash clean flight slash clean flight slash blob slash master slash docs slash blah blah blah. So I'm actually going to put the link in the description so that you don't have to write or copy anything down from the screen, but in these pages is everything you need to read about to actually set this up. So again, at the very top, you can see that the very first sentence around the GPS bits and pieces is that the GPS features in clean flight are experimental. Do not try and rely on these to do the GPS functions that you'd expect to be able to get away with on something like an APM, a Pixhook, or even one of the old 8-bit multiwees. It's not quite there yet. As you go down though, there are extra pieces here about using something called GPS Auto Configuration. That's where you can actually get the Seriously Pro 3 and Clean Flight to configure the GPS automatically for you. Um, you can follow that and that's that's one way to try it, but we're also going to go through the U-Box GPS Manual Configuration using a bit of software on a PC. So we're going to have to download that software and do it as well. The reason I'm going to show you the U-Box manual configuration is because some people have been getting a bit stuck trying to use configuration files because the configuration files tend to be U-Box generation specific and there's U-Box 6, 7, 8, 9 receivers around there and sometimes if you try and upload the configuration file for the wrong version of the GPS it won't work. So once we have gone through all of that we'll short talk about how we connect it up. So if we go back to the bench. Here's the actual wiring. So here's the top of the Seriously Pro 3. Here's our USB connector. And the connector that's actually right by the side of the USB is where we're going to plug our GPS in. But we'll cover that in a lot more detail and I'll go through a wiring diagram.
Once we've done that then, we'll actually go into CleanFlight itself, we'll actually configure CleanFlight so that it knows the GPS is here, we'll configure it with the board rate and also the protocol that the GPS is actually using. Once we've done all that, then the GPS will be running. So the first thing we need to talk about then is the hardware and the options for the GPS unit itself. There are a couple of things that we need to think about before we get into the rest of the video. The first is to make a note of where the GPS is going to connect to on the Seriously Pro flight controller. And that's going to be UART2. Now UART2, as we've already seen, is the little four pin connector. I think they're GST-SH connectors. You get the cables with the actual board itself that will plug into there, and that's what you're going to plug the GPS into. It's a five volt out connection, so it'll work perfectly with the GPS. It's also one of the UARTs that doesn't share anything else, so we can dedicate it to the GPS. Again, be careful, double check where the code is up to with Clean Flight. The GPS flight modes are not there yet, but we're going to install this right now so that we can have things on our on screen display when we get to that in the next video, and also when we set up the telemetry so that the GPS coordinates can be seen on our radio too. In time, I'm sure the GPS code will get more mature and we'll get the kind of security that we had with the 8-bit multi-Wii implementation of some of the stuff that's in Clean Flight that we had two or three years ago. But until we get that, we're installing the GPS just for those two purposes, not for flight modes. There are three ways that we can add a GPS to the actual board itself. If you read the GPS.md documentation, it will tell you which GPS's have been tested and they boiled down to a couple of different options. The first is using a U-Blox style GPS which is all I use here, I've never used anything else and the other one is an NMEA version as well. So there are three ways that you can add the GPS to the Seriously Pro 3. The first is to buy a pre-configured unit for clean flight so that all of the settings are already done for you and all you have to do is set up the configuration for the board rate and the protocol which is going to be U-Blocks in clean flight and you're good to go. They're starting to appear now but uh, they are tricky to get hold of because once you've actually configured it for the NAS A32 or clean flight then it, you have to unconfigure it for everything else. You can use the GNSS U-Center configuration software to configure the GPS manually and that's what we're going to do in this video. And then finally, you can use CleanFlight to auto-configure the GPS if it's a U-Blocks GPS. Now there are some really small ones available now that are about a centimetre and a half across that are really small that are designed for this and with those ones, a lot of the very small ones don't have any battery backup so you have to use the auto-configuration in things like CleanFlight because the GPS doesn't remember its configuration settings so it needs resetting every single time you power it on. But here we're using GPSs that have persistent memory, that have non-volatile memory, so we're actually going to configure the GPS so it's sending the right stuff that Clean Flights likes. So now we know what we're going to do, we're going to use GNSS U-Center to configure the GPS itself. We just need to have a quick look at the manual. So here is a screenshot of part of the Seriously Pro manual as it stands today. And the bit that we're going to be interested in is this bit here, which is, you can clearly show it's pointing to the UART2 connector, identified by the blue number 2 that's pointing to that little connector by the side of the USB at what's called the top of the board which actually is confusingly the back of the board, but don't worry about that for now. Hopefully if you're watching this, you've already installed your Clean Flight and SP3 into your craft and it's flying. And the other bit down the bottom is it says the UART2 connector used for 5 volt serial IO, GPS, etc. That's important. Most of the GPS units that you'll be picking up will be 5 volt and need 5 volts for them to work. To connect the GPS to the PC, we're going to need the FTDI adapter because the FTDI adapter is going to convert the USB connection to a serial connection so we can talk directly to the GPS itself. And this is how we're going to wire it up. 
So we're going to get our GPS module and we are going to connect the ground pins together. We're going to connect the plus five volt pins together and we're going to connect the receive on the FTDI adapter to the transmit and the transmit on the FTDI adapter to the receive on the GPS module so that that is going to work. So once we've done that, we can plug it into the PC and we can download the software. So let me just jump back to the desk. Let's have a look at what that looks like physically. And then once we've seen that, we'll jump onto the netbook, download the GNSS configuration software, and then we'll plug everything in and then we'll start manually configuring the GPS in preparation for it to be installed onto the flight controller. So this is what it physically looks like when it's all put together. Here's our GPS unit and on the front, uh, normally they have it all marked up, which is really helpful. It's plus five volts at the top, then it goes transmit, receive and ground on here. And then on the actual FTDI unit itself, when the camera catches up, hopefully you can see now that we actually have plus five volts we have a ground, we have a TXO and an RXI. So what I've done is connected the plus five volts to the plus five volts, the ground to ground, TXI to receive, and RXO to transmit. So those two lines are crossed over. Now what that means then, the other half of the FTD, FTDI adapter is actually um, a USB connector. So we can plug a USB cable into one end, and then the other end we can plug into the PC. So now we've got it like this, we're ready to jump onto the netbook and plug this cable into a spare USB slot. So, netbook time. So before we can plug the FTDI adapter and the GPS actually into the computer itself, we need to download some software. So there's a couple of places we need to visit on the web. The first place is actually need to have the instructions handy so that we can go through the configuration. So we need to make sure that we're on github.com slash cleanflight slash cleanflight slash blob slash master slash docs slash gps.md. And I'll put that link in the description. And we want to make sure that we've scrolled down to GPS manual configuration, which is in here, because this is what we're going to flick between this and the actual settings themselves to actually configure the GPS ready for installation to the Seriously Pro F3. Other thing we're going to need is the actual software itself to do this with. So to do this, we need to download it. So uh, if you go to u-blocks.com slash en slash product hyphen resources slash 2779, Again, I'll put that link in the description. If you just Google GNSS software download or U-Center Windows download, you'll usually find this. It moves around occasionally. If you zoom down on this page, you actually eventually get to the software. And there it is. We're actually on version 8.17. You can download it, install it onto your computer, and you're good to go. Once you've installed it, you'll get the little icon that you can run. And now what we need to do is we actually need to plug in the GPS and the FTDI unit into the side of the computer before we start the software. That way the COM port is ready to rock and roll. There it is. And we're not connected to anything at the moment. Before we go any further, we have to tell it which port the receiver's on. Ours is going to be on COM7 and immediately it connects. Now, we were lucky, there's all these different board rates that you can choose from. Typically, the board rates with a new unconfigured GPS will either be 9600 or 115200. I've occasionally got ones that are 57600. So, what we need to do is now we're connected and if it doesn't connect automatically, you just click on this little button here, the top left hand corner, and I would always recommend that you just select um, auto boarding. That way it'll automatically try and find the best board rate. And I can see here that we're connected on COM7 at 9600. Now I'm going to close these windows up because we don't need these. We can see it has a 3D fix. We can see the GPS is working properly. We need to now configure it. So there are two things we need to have a look at now. The first is we need our packet console and we also are going to need the configuration view. There we go, okay. So 
This configuration view is where we're going to do most of the work. And we're going to go through these settings here at the left hand side and actually set them up one by one. Now, what we can do is actually default the configuration here so that it's completely default. And what the way we do that is we navigate to CFG, which is configuration. There it is. And then we can say revert to default configuration and then we can click send and that if you're having weird problems happen with your GPS we'll sort that out. Now I'm actually going to do it and then we're just sure that we are completely happy and there's nothing set on this GPS that we don't want so I'll click send. Now it looks like we're still connected which is good. Sometimes when you do that, it'll change the board rate and other things. So you have to go through and again, just go through the connect routine, make sure that the receiver port is set correctly, and then just make sure the auto boarding is set and click on the green connect icon and it should find it. And we can see it's working because we're getting new information through here all the time. So now I have our connection back and I can see we're now talking on COM7115200 worthwhile jumping back into PRT ports and just making sure that they're still set how we've just set them up. So um, one, you are one, have the protocol in to zero, one and two, protocol out to zero, one and board rate of whatever it is you're going to set. I've set as one, one, five, two hundred. Now we know that's working great and we can see we're still getting information from the GPS. We can see it appearing in the packet console. What we need to do now is actually then tell the GPS what information we actually want to hear. So we're going to go back into MSG and MSG is where all these are all the different messages that the GPS can actually send out. We only want a handful of them on UART1 that we've just set up in the previous step. So we're going to go through again. This is all the stuff that's listed in the actual readmes here on the GPS.md. So we're going to set these up now. So we're going to go back into UCenter. First one it's asking us to set up is NavPOS. LLH on UART1 with an update interval of 1. Send that. Next one we're going to send is NAV DOP again on UART1 with an interval of 1. Send that. Next then is NAV SOL on UART1 with an interval of 1. Press send. Next one is NAV VELNED UART1 with an interval of 1. Click send and then nav time UTC, which is the actual GPS time on UART1, click send. Now the last thing we need to do then is go and select nav sys info, SV info on UART1 with a frequency of five, click send. Excellent, there we go. So now, we should see that those are the only ones that we're actually getting. And you can go back and you can just check that they're still reading. Fantastic, they're all there. Okay, so now what we've done is we've just done all of those and Navsys info as well. And then what you do is just configure the rest of this. Just go through each of these step by step like we've been doing it until you eventually get to the bottom where you're going to save current configuration and send. Once you've done that, the GPS is configured optimally for the Seriously Pro flight controller and we're ready to plug it into the actual board itself. What I'll do is I'll just finish the setup on here and what I'll do is I'll actually save the configuration that I created here into a file and I'll pop that file onto a link in the description so if anyone wants to have a look at it for their own use then that's there for them. So the next thing we need to do then is to connect it up to the Seriously Pro Flight Controller. Now it's configured. So here we actually have a little diagram of how we're going to connect it up. So we have our Seriously Pro F3 on the left hand side and we have our GPS module on the right hand side. And again, the setup is almost identical to how we wire it up to our little FTDI adapter. First way to do it is to connect the ground on the output on the Seriously Pro to the ground on the GPS module. Similarly, connect the plus 5 volts to the plus 5 volts and then connect the transmit on the GPS module to receive on the flight controller and vice versa. So it's pretty straightforward. Just make a note of which is the UART2 because that's the one we're going to plug it in. 
So if we jump to the bench so I can show you physically what that looks like. So here is my GPS that we've configured going through a little cable here and plugged into UART 2. There's the USB connector, here's the front of the craft, here's the back and there is the connections. So it's pretty straightforward to do. Uh, I know I had a couple of comments from a couple of subscribers about challenges getting hold of decent GPS units. Uh, this is actually a Ublox 8 72 channel GPS. It's nice and small, but it's a full size cover. This one actually came from a place called hobbyrc.co.uk. I use them a couple of times to get things from, and they're pretty good. So I'll, um, I'm not going to put a link in the description to it, but say thank you for those guys for stocking this stuff. It's nice to be able to get hold of pieces like this within a couple of days rather than waiting two or three weeks. Um, if you search for Ublox 8 small 72 channel GPS on hobbyrc.co.uk, you'll find this identical unit that I'm actually using here. They do also stock the smaller units that uh, probably about a third of this size, which doesn't have an onboard memory, but um, it talks about how you can set it up. It did come quite nicely with some nice little instructions on it as well, which was useful. So now we have it all set up, configured and wired up. The next thing we need to do is plug the Seriously Pro 3 back into the computer, fire up CleanFlight and let CleanFlight know it's now got a GPS to talk to. So let's do that next. So just before we plug it back into the computer, we're about to try everything here. So here's the GPS by the side of the unit. Uh, we're going to have to apply main power here via the battery to power everything up because the USB when we plug it in will not provide the five volts to run the GPS unit. So we're gonna have to actually power it first, let it boot, and then we'll plug it in. Now I haven't taken my props off here. I would always recommend if you're doing it, absolutely take your props off. You don't want to risk an uncommanded start. I do have my Tyrannus radio all set here so that when we power up I'm also getting a nice radio signal too so we sh hopefully should be safe. So first thing we can do is power it up and you'll hear the buzzer and everything go off and then it will show it's happy. Once it's happy we'll plug it into the computer and we'll start clean flight. So plug it in. Here we go which is ready. And we can see on the back of the USB we have a red power light, but we don't have a lock light yet. But we don't need to worry about that. That's happy. So we have a USB cable in the back of the board. So if we go on to the computer, let me plug this in. So once we've connected back up to the board, you can see the GPS is all working. Two things you have to do here to get it all okay. First thing you do is go into ports. We need to click the box by GPS. Remember it's UART 2 we've installed everything on. So we click GPS and also set the board rate that we configured. So we set it as 115200. So that's the first thing we do. Then click save and reboot. Next thing to do then, go into configuration down towards the very bottom. And here you need to click and enable GPS, select UBlox as the protocol, select auto detect as the ground assistance type, and then you need to look up the magnetometer declination in degrees. Now the magnetometer declination is pretty easy to find. So if you just Google uh, magnetic hyphen declination, you can either move around the map and actually click on where you are, and it will give you the declination for that actual position, or you can actually enter your city. That declination there is the one you actually want to put in to clean flight so that it knows the magnetic declination at your position. That might not sound like a lot, but where I am at the moment is about one and a half to two degrees off, so I have to put that in here. So put that in, Click save and reboot, and the next time it reboots, your little GPS indicator here in the top right hand corner should go green. If it does, everything's working and the board can see the GPS. If it doesn't go green, then you probably have the receive and transmit wires the wrong way around. If you swap those receive and transmit wires between the Seriously Pro 3 and the GPS, and the GPS light still doesn't come on here in clean flight, then I would unplug it, go back to the U-Box configuration software step, and redo all of that to make sure it's completely happy. You can just confirm that we're all working. If you click on GPS, then we can see here we have a true 3D fix, and we can see all of the activity here. Now, 
Finally, if we go into modes, we have two new modes that we can see that we didn't have before. We have GPS Home and GPS Hold. GPS Hold is the ability to retain its position in kind of 3D space using the barometer and other things as well. Um, that is one of the modes that kind of works okay right now. GPS Home is one of those where at the moment it doesn't work very well. And as I said at the beginning, just be careful of that. Caveat, caveat, caveat. Look it up before you go any further. Last tip before we finish the video, be very careful about where you actually sight the GPS on the frame. The GPS needs to be away from all the magnetic interference that you've got on the craft and with some of the large currents that flow around for the motors and the high frequency changes of signal, you can sometimes get that. So make sure when you're mounting your GPS, mount it as far away as you possibly can from everything else, particularly the buzzer, because when that making sound, it's also making an awful lot of radio frequency and electronic interference as well. So hopefully that will help those of you that are looking to do this. This should be the foolproof way of configuring your GPS and adding it to your craft. In the next video, we'll have a look at how to set up uh, Minim OSD to create an on-screen display for FPV flying and to have things like those GPS coordinates appear in the display as well. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video. There are lots of other videos on the channel and they're carefully ordered into playlists. So you may find that there are other videos on this same subject that you can go and watch. So I would recommend going into the playlist area of Painless360 YouTube channel and looking around and seeing what there is. You never know what you might find. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and happy flying.